So this video is how I plan to make money. This is such a weird topic for me to talk about because I feel like money is so taboo. For those who don't know, I moved out of my parents' home at 17 to LA just by making content. And that whole journey was a lot of spreadsheets, financial planning, and I wanted to share exactly how I did that and how I still use those strategies today in my business. I'll also go over how I got out of financial problems. I owed the IRS $10,000 in 2018. I didn't know how to pay them because I just didn't manage my money correctly. So I'll talk about how I learned how to pay back loans, how to properly just finance your life as an aspiring entrepreneur. I think it's important to understand why you're making money. I know this is pretty obvious. A lot of you guys are like, Jade, what the fuck? Like, I just want to live in a constant house in LA. But I think the reality is a lot of people just want to make money to prove that they're winning to someone. And I felt this for a long time and still do. Sometimes I have a goal to make money, not to just buy things, but to buy something to make people think I'm successful, to make sure I have validation of others others. And I don't know, like, I feel like it can be a slippery slope of doing it for yourself and then doing it for others. So I think it's just so important to understand why you, just you want to make money. My answer is I love telling stories and working with creative people. So I want to make money so I can live my life in California and pay my team that works in my company. I just love working with creative people. That's why I'm a videographer and editor just because it's my favorite thing to do. So money is fuel for me to do these things. But before, if you asked me last year, I would probably just want to make money just to be cool with my friends that are millionaires, right? So I think it's just so important to understand that because it will save you so much headache because there's gonna be a time where you don't ever feel successful enough because you're trying to make money for someone else. All right, so now that's out of the way, I'm gonna go over kind of like the format of this video. First, I'm gonna go over the mindset of making money, how to have a fucking confident ass brain to make your bread. The second thing I will go over is how to plan a year of revenue. I'm gonna show you guys my exact spreadsheet when I moved out of my parents' home. And the third thing is how I plan my day every single single day to achieve my one year goal. Whatever you have in mind, whether you want to move out of your parents' house too, get out of your financial debt, get out of student loans, or buy your dream house, you can use this one year plan to get to where you want to go, but then have these daily tactics to achieve your long-term goal. So let's start with the mindset. Okay, the mindset you have to have, other than being a badass bitch, is you have to be optimistic. Like, before you make money, you're not gonna have any money. Like, personally for me, before I made my first $1,000 on YouTube AdSense, I've never made that before, but you have to have the self-belief that you can do it before you see the results. And it's so hard because people think like, oh, once I get these numbers, then I'll be confident. But you have to start with confidence in your ability first. A really good analogy of this is, say you look at Picasso or a really famous artist. When you look at this artist, and they're painting the painting, right? Do you think when they're like 50% done with their painting, like that they're not a good artist, right? Or do you think, no, they're just 50% of the way there to their final artwork? When Picasso finishes the art, then you see the masterpiece and you're like, wow, he's so successful and rich. But before the artist even picks up a painting brush, he still has value, right? You have to see that as yourself. You are someone that has potential. It's just a matter of time. It's almost kind of like my dad used to call this, like betting on future truths. Like maybe the truth is you're a broke ass bitch, but the future, you believe that you're not gonna be a broke ass bitch. So you have to believe in yourself, first of all, that you're full of potential, you are successful already, it's just a matter of time. The second mindset I feel like to be a bad bitch and make money is you have to understand that money is just exchanging value. Like when you really fundamentally understand that money is just an exchange, an exchange of, you know, you're having something valuable and someone pays you for that value. You understand that every day when you wake up, you have a choice of how much value you want to bring to the world. Like it's such a weird thing to think about, but like say you're really fucking good at cooking, right? How do you just take your $10 bread bowl and make it more valuable? Like that's as a entrepreneur, what you think about every single day. How do I reach more customers by making more bread bowls? Or how do I make my bread bowl more premium so people price it at $20? So I think it's really important to understand that when you frame your reference of, how do I increase my value instead of how to make money? You actually now have a better reference so you focus on creating value for people versus just chasing a dollar amount. Ways you can increase your value as someone that's a content creator is A, reaching more people. When you reach more people, you increase your value because more people have eyes and attention on you, which attention is a scarce resource. The second way to increase more value is building deeper connections. So say maybe you don't have a big enough audience on social media, but you have a close connection with your fans. That's so valuable. Trust is value. The third thing that you can do to increase your value is solve a huge problem. This is really good if you have a service-based company and you're solving a problem for someone. So say you're a freelancer and you're solving a problem, which is 
fixing shitty web designs. You know, as a freelance web designer, you fix that huge problem and you get money because that's valuable. And the fourth thing that I would have to say in terms of this value thing is you can also solve problems that are super niche. Maybe they don't have to be a big problem, but only like five people in the world have this problem and you have the cure for this. That is hella value. This is a good example in the medical field, especially for certain health conditions. Like if you know a lot about a certain subject, people pay premium for it. So I hope that gives you an idea of like how you can increase your value with these kind of four ideas. Personally for me, because I'm a content creator and I own a media agency, I reach more people, but I also solve big problems that companies have with advertising. So those are the things I really focus on, but for you, it can differ. And these are just things to keep in mind. And literally, if you just focus on those things, you will make more money. All right, so let's go over my year plan. You know, my biggest tip for anyone that's starting out is try to lower your expense. Like you really don't need that Team 10 content house your first year of moving out. And I know this is pretty obvious for some people, but on social media, it, it, you feel like you need the most glamorous set and you need the most high production stuff, but you really don't. Look on Facebook Marketplace for college rooms or dorms or housemates. That's personally where I've found my living accommodation way better than Airbnb because it's a lot cheaper. So the first thing you want to understand is what is your monthly income? So I'm going to write this down. So my rent right now is actually 1100 because I moved to a new city and I shared this house with three girls. My food expense, because I have medical issues with my stomach, it's a little bit more expensive, but I spend $500. I'm going to put my insurance, gas, and everything and come back when I have that number. So my total minimum monthly salary is $3,500 a month. That's on a minimum. I love to multiply this number by 0.3, which is how much you want to make per month so you can actually have a savings. It's super important to live for me minimalistically, but have a savings at the end of the day because shit happens when you're running a business. So if I were to do this for myself, my minimum yearly plan needs to be 4,600 a month. That might not be a lot of money to you guys or you expect me to spend more. I just personally like living with housemates and I just personally enjoy investing more money into my company. Just a disclaimer, this doesn't include like my trips or my team costs. That's a whole company expense. This is more for my personal salary. It's just something to keep in mind. So now that you know how much money you need, let's create a one-year plan to achieve this goal. So look up your favorite city and and look up a cool apartment you want to live in on Facebook Marketplace, see how much it costs. So comment below what that number is for you. I'm just curious what that looks like. And if you are saving up for something else, let me know that is for you too. Once that I have my money in mind, I'm going to lay out on the top column the whole year of 2021. And what I'm going to do is pretend I'm starting from zero and try to get to 4,600 a month by the end of this year. You guys don't even know, I, I remember my dad sat me down with an Excel spreadsheet similar to this. And he told me that everything has to have a plan. You need to have a plan. You don't need to know where exactly you're going in a year, but you need to have a direction. It doesn't matter where you're going, you just have to commit. And my dad gave me such amazing advice and I still use this fucking same technique every single day because before I just didn't have a plan. I just didn't, you know, I just complained a lot that I didn't know how to make money. But when you sit down with a spreadsheet for 15 minutes, it just changes your fucking life and it puts the control back in your hands. And I just really empower you guys to do this with me because I've been creating spreadsheets and I never thought I could make this money. I never thought I could make, let alone, you know, 4,600 a month, let alone fund my whole company and travel the world and work with huge companies. I literally didn't think I could do any of that. But when you have a plan, when you break it down, you start to piece together what you need to do today. And you start to break down your big goal into smaller chunks and make it more achievable, which is what I'm gonna do right now. So what you wanna do is, say your goal is 4,600 a month. You wanna space out over the course of a year, numbers that are before 4,600. So for example, maybe I do 30,000 in July, maybe 2,000 in May, and maybe 1,000 in my first month. So you start to really chunk down your goals. So I just made this exercise for the whole year, but you know, sometimes your goal takes a few more years, sometimes it takes three years. It really depends on your ambition and how much time you have. Okay, so now that I created this plan of how much I plan to make every single month to get to 4,600, I'm gonna create something called a worst case scenario. I'm gonna duplicate this sheet, but add numbers that are maybe less ambitious than the ones I listed before. It is so fucking important to have a worst case scenario sheet because sometimes things don't go your plan. And I always have this, I have two spreadsheets. I have my best case scenario and my worst case. And I never used to do this because I used to just create one spreadsheet and I would get so mad at myself if I didn't hit my goal. I think it's so important to have two sheets because then you can at least gauge what's the worst and best case and at least you're mentally prepared for it. So for this worst case scenario, I'm just gonna divide all the numbers in half just in case I don't hit these numbers. I was watching a TED talk from Brene Brown and she says, history is just a study of surprises. And that's exactly what life is in business. It's just handling surprises. Our job as creators and entrepreneurs is literally just to handle things that we don't even know that's coming our way. So the only way to prepare for it is just to create a worst case scenario sheet. Give this video a like if you're so far enjoying this video. I really hope this is helpful and shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode.
If you guys are getting so far enjoying this video, make sure you comment below your thoughts. It really means the world to me and I really appreciate it. So like I said in the beginning, you want to just increase your value every single month. That's literally at the end of the day, how you make money. So you might be wondering, Jade, how the fuck do you make money and increase your value if I have zero dollars? So I have a few videos on how to make money online. I will link down below. You guys can check it out. I'll just personally list how I make money and then hopefully we'll get you guys some inspiration. So on the left hand column, I'm gonna write down all my revenue streams. I have around seven to eight revenue streams. Half of it is personal branding related. So basically me as a content creator. The other half is my company X8 Media. So it's my brand agency. So I'll just like list it below if you guys are curious for my content side, I make money through AdSense. So Google sends me a paycheck every single month for making content. I get paid through affiliate marketing. So this is basically when I get paid when anyone uses my Amazon link. So if you use my Amazon link, you're supporting me, which I really do appreciate. I also have a course with Shopify and Oberlo. So I get money every time someone buys my course. If you guys want to check it out, you guys can check it out in the description box. No pressure. I also make money through brand deals. So I work with brands like Shopify, like I said, Canva. I've worked with some domain companies, currently working with some banks. So brand deals are a huge part of my revenue personally, and I do them at least once every other month. Now on my company side, I make money through consulting. So I will consult some startups on their social media growth. I also consult some creators on how to grow their brand. I also make revenue in my company through influencer campaign management. This is probably a majority of our revenue in last year. I make most of my money actually through through working with companies and allocating budgets to their influencer campaigns. The last thing I make money is a little bit of investment. I get a lot of Bitcoin rants and lectures from my dad. So I am a side investment blockchain connoisseur. I don't do too much of it, but I'm really getting into building out my investment portfolio. So these are my current ways I make money. And I wanted to showcase how you can map out for your brand the same strategy. My best advice if you're starting out to be a creator is start with making money through AdSense because once you have revenue revenue through, you know, Google paying you, then you can turn on all these other revenue streams. I didn't make money till my seventh year of YouTube. So just something to keep in mind when you're planning this out. I remember my first ad check, I got $200. So we can kind of add that there. I did a lot of consulting in my first year of growing on social media. So we can add that for 300. So that will equal to our $500 goal. And basically you want to keep doing this for your entire year. And then over time, you can see your best and worst case. So you can plan accordingly. My best tip, you guys, when you're creating your financial roadmap is like like I said, you want to increase your value. I have seven revenue streams because I've been doing this for like fucking 10 years at this point. But when you're starting, I always recommend to focus on the one first. One of my mentors told me you can do everything just not at once. And that's what I truly believe in. So something to keep in mind is try to focus on one or two and then add on each month so you can really get hyper focused and increase your chances of success. Now, how do I plan my goal day to day? So once I have this goal, let's just zoom in on March. Say I want to make $200 through AdSense and $300 through consulting. This is how I literally did it. I remembered when I was first starting, I knew that each thousand views, YouTube paid me $5. So if I did the math, the amount of views I had to get per video would be I would have to get 40,000 views a month to get $200 in revenue. So what you can do is you can figure out how to achieve those numbers by maybe if you want to do 40,000 videos, you have to post twice a week and you can really plan out your month based on your goal. So I did that for my first month. Then I also did consulting. So say I charge people $50 per call. That means that in a month I need to call six people to get $300, which means in a week I got to do twice a week calls. So then my idea was for every YouTube video I made, I got one client that I consulted for Instagram marketing that's what I did back in 2017. And I literally kept doing this. I kept doubling my rates. I kept increasing my content, increasing my frequency, getting mentors around me. And then over time, I actually did my goal. This sounds really fucking scammy. Like I'm trying to sell you on some shit, but it really comes down to having your best and worst case scenario because you might not always hit those really great months, but then you're mentally prepared for it. So I really, really believe that when you're planning your month goal, you want to quantify the time hours. So when you look at your week, you only have to think about not making, you know, six, $500 a month. You just have to think about posting twice a week and getting two coaching calls a month. You can apply this to anything. If you're selling a sock and you have to sell 20 socks to get, you know, hundred dollars, you can just focus on selling 20 socks, not the money. Do you see why I really emphasize on making value, not money? Because then you only focus on the act of doing it versus the outcome. So now that you know how I plan my year, how I plan my month, let's go over how I plan my day. I look at my goal, which if my goal is $500, a month, I would most likely do two videos a week and two coaching calls at $50. So for my daily goal, I ask myself, what are three things I can do today to achieve my one week goal? All I do is just focus on those three things. So you can see I take my big 
goal, make it into a smaller monthly goal, to make it a weekly goal, to make it into a daily goal. Honestly, this whole strategy should just be called Russian nesting doll strategy because you basically just take the bigger doll and make smaller dolls and then you get to your daily doll. Every single day I wake up and I think my day doesn't matter. I feel like I have this big goal and I can never achieve it. But then when you do daily goals successfully over the course of a year, your chances of success are so much more likely than just grinding out for a week and then burning out. And it's just really about these small goals that are so important and every single day really does matter. So now that you know how I plan my financial goals, I just want to give you guys a quick update on where I'm at. So weirdly enough, I've been doing this for three years and my monthly salary went from 3,300 to around 40, 600 a month and I reinvested all my external profits into my company hiring more people editors and team members and investing into my portfolio and right now Bitcoin and like Ethereum honestly not much has changed I try to maintain more minimal lifestyle like I used to want to buy a house because I thought that was the smartest thing but I realized I'd rather invest my money into my company versus some down payment for a land so understand I know the personal finance on YouTube world can get really tricky you have to understand what you want what type of life you want that's why I kept asking you what do you want to do with this money at the very beginning of the video because if you want to become a fucking real estate tycoon then do it but if you just want to travel and live your life you don't have to do all these things you don't have to invest in real estate you don't have to invest in Bitcoin you can invest into yourself and that at the end of the day that's the most important thing because yourself is the most valuable thing it's the most valuable vehicle to your business to your identity so understand that you don't have to invest in GMC if you don't want to okay <laughs> maybe I'm just trying to justify the fact that I didn't invest in the stock market this year. The next tip I have too is something I added this year is a board of advisors. You know, typically in a startup, a board of advisors are people that have equity in your company that give you advice quarterly. I think as a freelancer and individual, you should have your own board of advisors or mentors. I try to schedule meetings quarterly or monthly with people I look up to. I last month had a meeting with the director of marketing at Shopify to give me some advice on my incubator program at my company that works with early stage creators and invests in them. I asked Sanja, who is the founder of a really successful marketing agency that works with six to seven and figure clients how to mentor me and she meets with me monthly and I seek advice from my dad you know my dad gives me advice on blockchain and I think it's so important to literally schedule monthly meetings of someone you trust that can look at your fucking one-year sheet and be like okay this is what I would do and it's just so helpful to have this mentorship board because when I didn't have one I was just shooting in the dark if you don't have a mentorship board that can give you advice I really recommend two things you can download clubhouse which is an app that you can meet other like-minded creatives you can also join my email list where I try my best to match make and help you guys meet more creative. So you guys can check out my newsletter below if you want to meet other creators and get to know the community more and get a board of advisors for yourself. I really believe that this is such a huge thing I implemented in my business in the past year and it changed the game. I was able to work with way bigger companies, connect with people deeper and just do what I love, which is working with creative fucking people. The last tip I have is please, please, please do yourself a favor and don't just set professional goals all the time. Set your three professional goals daily, right? Like I said, but also set your three personal goals. When you're at a different caliber, when you're working so hard, your body just needs more self-care. You guys know that I keep complaining on my channel that I can't poop and it's because I don't take care of myself. And in the past month, I've made it a commitment to increase my salary if needed to take care of my body. I have IBS constipation, which basically means I can't poop. And I decided to increase my you know, travel expenses, my massages, my therapist expenses, and added an external budget to it so I can actually operate in my business better. I used to feel so guilty going to the doctors. I don't know why, but I realized you are the most important asset in your business. You are the most important valuable person. So you have to treat yourself that way. Even if you don't have money, act like a fucking rich ass bitch because treating yourself can only give you ROI. If you have an issue with loving yourself, like I do, my biggest tip is just to make three goals every single day for your personal self and start with that. You don't have to go buy a trip to Hawaii. You could just start with like, I'm gonna eat really good food, I'm gonna go on a walk and spend time with myself. And that right there is a game changer. Thank you guys for watching this video. I fucking love you guys. I hope this is helpful. I'll link below this spreadsheet. If you sign up for my email list, you'll get this for free. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.